also mentioned that currently we observe that the climate change agenda um, is a little bit uh, overshadowed by also the war in Ukraine. We see that a lot of attention, of course, is politically put on, on, the, on this crisis, which is, of course, also connected to the energy crisis and is connected to um, increasing energy prices that we, we are facing. So um, energy autonomy and trying to be more energy efficient are core pillars of uh, future de decarbonization pathways of countries. Um, you are now here in Brussels, and uh, how do you see, or what can you can you do as an organization to to discuss um, also with political leaders um, the question of um, sustainable decarbonization as a key prerequisite to prevent, of course, f uh, future conflicts about energy, future conflicts about raw material, because um, at the end, it's about um, how to be efficient, how to have safe energy, but also um, how to be less dependent on others, uh, how to be less uh, fragile as a state. Um, could you please elaborate a little bit on, on this? I think there are several um, dimensions that need to be taken into consideration in this regard. Uh, on, on a national level, we see that within less than a year, the coalition agreement that was signed in, in Germany and in, in the current government is already outdated because of the situation that you've, ju that you've just described. Uh, after the, the, the one issue crisis, Corona, we now have a, have a war. And while a Corona enabled us to understand that Germany has a huge homework in front of it, due to digitalization that simply did not take place in Germany uh, as, as fast enough. We now see with regard to the to the terrible war in Ukraine that um, energy dependency was not uh, in the focus of, of recent government years uh, because it was simply not perceived as relevant enough. Um, so my first dimension here would be that we um, that we take previous decisions quite seriously and that we can even refer to the to the to last last um, uh, COP in Glasgow, where we had a clear decision taken by state leaders saying that no further fossil projects um, should be made or signed. Uh, we know where we are today. The other, it's, it's completely the, uh, the the other side that we are now seeing 180 degree turnover um, in this regard. So. Um, when we when we focus on this dimension, I would I would say let's uh, also promote the idea of multilateralism and the idea of cooperation and also making viable decisions that are then also taken granted and and executed execute, executed. Um, then there comes the Christian dimension in here and here again I would promote the idea of a of a one world concept um, and I would say that. I mean, everything that's been done needs to be done through the lens of the vulnerable groups. And if one euro is invested in a way that it helps people who suffer already today under climate crisis consequences, then it's a good, it's a good investment. And this is something that also decision makers in Sharm el Sheikh and other way, also in, in Bali where the G20 just recently um, met, should always take it to, into um, uh, consideration. So maybe these are the the two most important ones, and then it comes to, 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 I think, very concrete issues where we think, I think, more broadly, if it's about a carbon reduction worldwide or even within the EU, uh, we don't give up in, in supporting the idea of the Fit for 55 package within the European context. Um, maybe here we can also ask for for ambitious steps uh, that, that deepen the, the different packages that now need to be implemented or even executed. Um, we have to, to think about, again, we discussed it before, the different um, policy areas. Uh, I would like to bring in here also traffic and, and housing. Maybe we discuss this later as well, because here we also see that the whole infrastructural turn is simply not happening. Yeah, I mean, we are, we are coming with very concrete short-term strategies, but it does not help us really building a more sustainable future that really helps on the long reducing um, uh, CO2 emissions. Yes, and you, you also mentioned that we have on, on the one side now, now the war, but we also have expectations from the global south, and we should not underestimate that it seems that uh, we can also observe this in the current negotiations in COP27, that the expectations from countries in the global south is very high when it comes to technological transfer, to financing green transformation, to finance investment, and uh, 
the pledges the Global North is currently giving doesn't seem to be enough. Uh, also, when we discuss loss and damages, as you know, the expectations are huge and seem not to be covered by the Global North. So is there, in your opinion, a real commitment by the Global North or are they just also drawn by uh, all these different crises they are currently facing themselves that they cannot make the commitment which would be needed to basically have a real global approach on the issue? Mm. The simple answer is no, there is not. Uh, I don't see the, the, the signs uh, focusing on this. Um, also, I mean, expressing the concern that others see, I mean, especially the younger generations. I mean, we have now a generation taking over, not only taking over parliaments, but also the streets, expressing their concern, doing this very radically. And it's really hard to criticize them because we have to consider and acknowledge that other generations completely failed. And when scientists tell us that um, the global north must spend five to ten times more money than they are doing today in order to find to fight the, the current climate uh, crisis, then we obviously see, uh, and this was your question, that that the global north is not doing enough. And I think, and I think. Like, I mean, again, yeah, we have many different topics down the table, and, and one dimension is also the post-colonial debate. I, I mean, there is a very relevant point here that the Global South comes now with demands, but at the same time, also here I would not now dig into, into new frontiers, there's also high potential, um, because the Global South has a lot to offer in this regard. I mean, if, when we talk about uh, rainforest protection, uh, when, when we talk um, about water scarcity, about forced migration, I mean, there are so many dimensions that need to be addressed uh, through direct negotiations. And I think that the global framing here needs to be readdressed. Maybe the current formats are not sufficient anymore. Uh, we've made our experiences. Loss and damage is, is, uh, um, is a term that is discussed for the past 40 years, 30 years at least. Um, and, and we clearly see that the, the legal responsibility, besides the financial uh, responsibility, is simply not taken because governments are afraid that once they also step into legal responsibilities, they might be blamed for everything, and this makes them even more reluctant. And this is something that we clearly does not want to, do not want to see. 